Should I install an RCD into my van or my motorhome or boat or whatever to protect myself and to protect the vehicle? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Power Solutions and in this episode I'm going to cover some basics around the installation of an RCD and I'll explain what that is uh, very shortly. And uh, the whole idea is that uh, this is a unit that would protect you and protect the van and protect everybody that goes into it. Folks, before we go on, uh, if you are not an electrician, qualified electrician, we strongly suggest that you uh, get the services of a qualified electrician when you're installing your consumer unit in your motorhome, your van, your boat, your yacht, whatever it is, your off-grid cottage. Uh, and you don't want to be messing around with something that you are not qualified to do. So please get uh, the services of a qualified electrician. Right, so this is uh, what is known as a consumer unit. I'm just using this to demonstrate. This is quite a big bulky one, not one that we would actually put into a van, but it's got the same stuff that uh, somebody would put into the motorhome or their van. And, and namely that is a, um, an RCD and then uh, two circuit breakers. I just want to cover the basics of an RCD and talk about the two main types of RCDs and uh, talk about whether you actually need one in your vehicle or whether you can rely on the RCD that is in theory installed and wherever you're plugging your, your um, power cable to. So let me draw a few things out and then we'll we'll get to it. So I'm going to use blue to draw the, uh, let's say that you parked up at an, an RV park or a caravan park or a certified location with power or an air in France or something like that, somewhere that you can plug into shore power. And let's just assume that you probably have a 16 amp takeoff, so the standard 16 amp plugs that we all have in our caravans and our motorhomes and what have you. You You find there's a a little bit of a post there and a little bit of a box over there and uh, the, the lid is probably lying on the ground next to it and there's a whole lot of grass growing there and there's some uh, plugs coming in and you've got a 16 amp plug coming off to your vehicle and somebody's put in a splitter so Get another one going to somebody else's vehicle and another splitter going to another vehicle. So that's quite common that you have this and it's a bit ropey or, you know, maybe you've got a nice pristine new unit. But uh, for the most part, these things get to be a little bit shabby and ropey and you actually don't know how well it works. So <clears throat> in, your, in your own vehicle, you come in, let's say there's the wall of the vehicle. It comes and it plugs into the vehicle there. And then inside the vehicle, you've got a short run and that brings you to your little consumer unit. So the, the general consensus, so the question arises, should you have a consumer unit or in particular an, an RCD in your van? Uh, and the general consensus is that you definitely should for a number of reasons. And I'll go into that now. Now, the, let's talk about basically what an RCD is. So an RCD, the, the acronym RCD stands for Residual Current Device. Um, I, I don't particularly like the name myself because it's, it doesn't really say what exactly it is. Um, <clears throat> when I was growing up um, in South Africa and you walked into a, a, an electrical shop, you generally asked for an earth leakage and everybody knew exactly what you wanted when you said that you wanted an earth leakage. So basically a residual current device is something that protects you from essentially from earth leakages. So if I just be very explicit, an RCD does not protect you from uh, holding the live and neutral and shocking yourself or a dead short or something like that. They, that's not what they're designed for. Uh, they are designed, so basically in a nutshell, if you've got your, your positive and your negative, so you've got your positive coming here and your negative running back, then basically what the RCD does is it sits between them, so I'll use blue again, it sits between them here and it measures the difference in the current 
that's going out versus the current that's coming in. And the whole idea is that if somehow you've got something coming down to earth here, then what it's going to do is it's going to detect that there's a leakage going to earth and it's going to actually switch everything off. So basically on the unit when you know it's up it's working so it's on there and when when there's a problem occurs this thing drops down and it actually protects it breaks the circuit entirely it switches both of these off and uh, then you're safe so basically that's what an rcd is and there are essentially so when we say rcd we're talking about the family of residual current devices so it's a family of devices this is also sometimes known as the RCCB and this is the most common that we have installed everywhere but you can have what is called an RCBO and the difference between these two is that this only protects a leakage to earth it protects from a leakage to earth and this one protects from a leakage to earth as well as overcurrent and sh you know dead shorts and things like that so basically if you're using an rcd or an rccb which are so, sort of the same thing in, in most people's minds uh, you also need to have a circuit breaker as well <clears throat> if you're using an RCBO you don't need an additional circuit breaker because this does it all for you so this does a lot more than this and uh, yeah lots of opinions on whether you should use an RCCB with circuit breakers or just uh, single RCBOs or something like that but uh, <clears throat> It general consensus is that um, if you're using multiple things, so you're come bringing your to your your shore power to then and you're sending it to multiple things, that maybe you each you should make use of you know one RCCB and then several circuit breakers as an MCB main circuit breaker to um, uh, th that is is set to well well is is the has the capacity for whatever you're using on that circuit. So if you if you only need five amps, don't put a 30 amp circuit breaker on there. You'd rather actually have, well, you know, like at the most a 10 amp circuit breaker on there to protect you that if something goes wrong, it, it drops at a much lower current. But the whole, <clears throat> the, the reason why I drew this here is that uh, for, for a lot of cases, and we've seen this in a number of places, especially when this thing gets really ropey and there are various splitters that people put on and uh, several different vehicles taking off the same point and that sort of thing, the question arises, can you actually trust the RCD or the RCCB or the RCBO, whatever it is that has been installed here, can you actually trust it to do the right job? And for that matter, do you know what the polarity is? Have they, have they actually got the live and neutral in the same way and all that sort of stuff? And <clears throat> that's all going to affect you. So let me bring to your attention this little device. These are really inexpensive little devices. And what you'll see on this here is uh, you've got uh, a number of statuses depending on the three LEDs that light up. So on the top, we've got um, everything is correct all three LEDs light up. Uh, coming down it says that there are no earth so the two ones on the left the, the one on the right doesn't light up that means that it detects there is no earth. Uh, the next one there is that the live and neutral have been reversed so the one if the one, only one light on the left goes then the live and neutral are reversed and uh, next one which is quite strange no neutral at all and then we get a live and earth reversed which is quite dangerous the second last one and then finally if nothing lights up then this doesn't detect anything coming down the line so it's either switched off or just not working at all these are inexpensive devices and uh, i don't know exactly what they're called but it's uh, they they are we'll find the link and, and it, it stick it at the bottom of this so that you can see uh, where you can buy such a device they're fairly inexpensive and they are quite reliable I've, I find that they do warm up and in some cases you see that they, they have a continuous sort of buzz when they are operating. So perhaps don't leave it plugged in 
permanently uh, plug it in just when you need to actually check the the wiring that's coming in but they are really handy because at a glance you plug it in and it tells you a lot of really important information and you, what you want is the top option where it shows that everything is correct with all three LEDs uh, lighting up so if I was to put this into this here you can see straight away all three LEDs have come on that means that live and neutral are the right way around there is a proper earth and nothing is mixed up everything is working so in theory the the power is as we want it so handy little device if you don't have one of these i highly recommend that you get one of them to protect yourself if you're in the habit of plugging into shore power at different locations then i really think you should get one of these coming back to the uh the unit itself because because of what i said here that this might not be that good and that stable um, the general consensus that you'd find everywhere is if you can fit one into your vehicle. So if you're doing a, a new build on a van, so you're doing a conversion of a van or something like that, um, and you're considering which uh, consumer unit to put in, then my suggestion is go for something that has an RCCD. Uh, if, you, if you have an old existing motorhome, uh, let's just say that you've uh, bought one that's been manufactured in Germany, say a Heimer or a Euromobile or something like that. Um, especially if it's old, they may, might not have an RCD, they might just have a circuit breaker. Um, my suggestion is uh, get an electrician on board if you're not an electrician and get that changed over to a proper RCD uh, and that you can test. You see on, on the RCD you've got this little test button that you can test fairly regularly. Um, one of the guys on, that uh, made a suggestion that I thought was quite quite good was that you should, when you are changing your clocks, uh, assuming that you have multiple clocks in your vehicle, like a lot of us do, um, and you're going to need to change them for daylight savings or change back again. At the same time, just test it. So push this drops it down and then change your clocks over or something like that. Um, but yeah, we, we'd recommend that you that you test this regularly. That is the strong consensus everywhere on the web when you read about this is don't take it for granted. Actually test this at least once every six months. So you just press it in and that pretty much simulates a leak to earth and this should drop. And uh, as long as it's dropping, you're fine. If you push this in and it never drops, then you know that the unit isn't working properly. So, old old vehicles and new builds strongly suggest you do install an RCD. Uh, a very quick rabbit trail then on whether you should install uh, the RCCB version of it or the RCBO. Um, quite a few people, uh, if, if your build is really simple, and uh, you only have really have one use of it, then I think the general consensus is an RCBO is fine, or you could use multiple RCBOs, but they are quite expensive. Um, but there is another school of thought that you have one RCB, and the RCD, sorry, and uh, <clears throat> the RCD, although it has a current stipulated on it, it's, it's not going to trip when it reaches that current. It could actually, uh, become damaged when it reaches that current. So the the whole idea is that you have this the RCD that can carry as much current as you need for the installation uh, and then use multiple circuit breakers, so MCBs or circuit breakers that uh, have the current stipulated for the use of that particular circuit in your vehicle. Uh, you wouldn't have that many circuits but you know, if you look at our our own vehicle, we've got a coffee machine which uses a reasonable amount of current, so that would need a circuit breaker capable of, you know, th at least 10 amps. And uh, we have uh, the general charging and stuff like that, that a five amp circuit breaker on that is fine, or a six amp circuit breaker is absolutely fine on that. So not a bad idea to have one RCD that's got enough um, capacity to handle everything and then multiple circuit breakers that uh, are fit for purpose for that particular circuit. Um, the 
RCDs generally, there's a 30 milliamp trigger. So when, when it detects the difference between the live and neutral current uh, of 30 milliamps, that's when it trips. There are other stipulations as well, but the important thing is 30 milliamps. And um, the, I can't remember exactly what it is, but there is a, a I think it's round about 50 to 60 milliamps that it is thought that, that at that level, it's enough to kill an average healthy adult human being. So 30 milliamps is well within that. Um, and uh, that, that is the normal RCD that you get um, in most places is a 30 milliamps. So when that difference is 30 milliamps, not enough to kill you. It, it, it actually cuts extremely rapidly. You hardly feel the shock um, and it protects you. And obviously the combination of that and the circuit breakers uh, protect the vehicle from burning down if there is a problem. So hopefully you found that useful. Uh, in conclusion, stick an RCD in your van, uh, get an electrician to help you if you're not qualified, but yeah, uh, and test it regularly. So hit that button regularly to make sure that it's actually working properly. So hopefully you found that useful.